Welcome to the Fantasy Goons Podcast, part of the Pucks Out family. It's time to skip the book and find out the info you need to win your league with Bobby, Davey and Brandon. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're the Fantasy Goons. I'm Bobby. He's Davey. He's Brandon. hey You can find us on the three majors of social media for now, at Pucks Out Pod. We're working on getting the new Twitter set up. Uh, I'm not I'm not <laughs> working on anything, uh, if we're being honest. Now, let's get you the info you need to be a champ. I've actually just uh, hired someone to do us a nice little logo for the show, so we'll get all that started up. How are you guys doing this week? I'm good. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm uh, alive and well watching lots of, lots of hockey. Um, my North Dakota Fighting Hawks lost out of the NCAA uh, uh, tournaments, but uh, that's you, okay. You and my it's boy okay. Tom. You I and know. my boy Tom. I'm, I'm feeling bad <laughs> for you guys because I, you know, I didn't have a dog in the hunt. Right, um, right. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm, you know, just feeling... Feeling poorly for you, brother. Uh, you know, I'm 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 not feeling good for you, man. Yeah, it's all right. Bonner, how you doing, bud? Yeah, man, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you know, by this time that everybody has listened, I will be. I will have gone to a couple of Preds games this week. Davy is headed tonight yeah. uh, to see his uh, his team lose. Yeah, <laughs> we. I agree. <laughs> we, we can potentially hope. Uh, as as Preds fans, I'm sure that Davy himself does not hope that. So. <laughs> I don't have much hope in the stars though, so it's uh it might be it they might be rough. St- they started the season so strong, yeah. bro. But realistically, we can all talk <laughs> about how I'm doing fantastic in terms of this show and straight friggin' dominating yeah. you guys uh in uh in, in Peg of the Litter, my uh my yeah. league. So <laughs> Yeah. My leagues I'm either doing amazing or I'm doing absolutely horrible. There I don't think there's any many leagues where I'm like you know, middle. Yeah. So there's yeah. a couple of leagues where I think I like there was a I was out of the country, like I I did start all. I didn't even mess with like actually move, doing it because I didn't feel like it. <laughs> and the day before I got back, I was like, Oh, I'm it says I was gonna lose by like three hundred points. It's a very high scoring league. <laughs> yeah. Uh but I ended up winning by like 200 points because like the day I got back, I made a couple moves and I guess those guys just went off that Sunday night. Well, I'm doing middle. I'm doing either middling or I'm dominating. I don't, there's no <laughs> in, there's no uh, there's no bad for me in hockey this year. So, well, I'm I, I'm, I'm going to brag up on my other league, my other one. I'm I'm in first, but y'all aren't in that one. Yeah. So I, don't, I can't even yeah. like I can't. Sure. <laughs> dude, just, dude, sure just went, uh, dude went and joined a beginner's public league. <laughs> yeah. and he's like, that's I'm killing screen, it. That's like a I'm screenshot from two years ago. Uh, I'm killing it. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. He just keeps that on hand. A bunch yeah. of North Dakotans in that one. And they're pretty good. There's like four or five people now and they're like solid. It and then yeah. the other ones are kind of like ah they're all right well but. see we had we're, me and bobby are in a uh in a league our uh, uh that was started on reddit and it's you know it's called our fantasy hockey yeah and that's where kind of the league got put together bro those dude they're like 90 percent are canadian oh and man like they live eat yep. and breathe <laughs> hockey and so like generally we've sasa was in there for a while we all got just straight worked every year <laughs> well you know now that i'm better at fantasy it was a keeper league so like it kind of based on your previous years and so i right. had a decent team but not not good enough to compete well we did a redraft this year and we're going to be doing a redraft for keepers next year nice and i guess my newfound knowledge of fantasy hockey has me sitting at second and in that league we get a uh like an, a, i think it's like an older old school all-star jersey Okay. As the trophy, okay. we, I like we that. ship it to, to, That's to cool. individuals. So I'm hoping I can get it and I can throw a Preds patch or a Pucks Out podcast patch on yeah, there or something. That'd be cool. Dude. So that'd be great. I'm hoping, man. I'm 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 not hopeful because <laughs> that league is <laughs> so good. dominant, and I have uh, and I'm 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 having goalie struggles in that league. So we'll see. But okay. uh, I'm I'm pumping through. Just got done hammering that Gonzaga game on DraftKings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, hammered the change the, or something? Uh, no, but I just I, I don't know. Got you know got a couple beers in me, so I hammered the under and I hammered uh, uh the Gonzaga under mi- the under total and uh, Gonzaga minus eight and a half. Mm. But, <laughs> That's uh, a brave soul. Uh, Gonzaga hasn't hit the under in a game this tournament. So, <laughs> so th- what you're saying is they're due for it. 
I don't <laughs> think so. Have you been watching them play basketball? So yeah, <laughs> USC's also the best defense, and USC's got two like future NBA players on that team. USC's going to be. I think they're th- obviously you know it's how tournaments work. So well, gonna be the Gonzaga game. has a dude yeah. with a sweet handlebar mustache. So <laughs> yeah. it all balances out. Is that a handlebar or a Fu Manchu? Uh, no, it's, it's a both. handlebar. Fu Manchu has the middle. Oh, the I middle right. piece okay. with the, oh I'm thinking of the, the whatchamacallit, the, the British detective the one. The Philip Forsberg? Yeah, yeah the come the, up, the swirl. I would still say that's a handlebar. Yeah, I guess in my head, that's what I think of for that's a handlebar, handlebar, but that's a British handlebar. That's just a You're fancy, talking American handlebar. That's a fancy <laughs> handlebar. Yeah. That's, but, this is a but biker two, but handlebar. two very different places if you, if you go to a hey we're gonna go to a handlebar bar and you show up with that thing ooh, you want to make sure then you, you go to Murfreesboro and it's like a place <laughs> it's like a place that lets you bring in your own skull vodka yeah. I've, I've been told a story of where i've been sitting at the bar with some ridiculously way too old man and we are passing his bottle of skull back and forth <laughs> well, that, and we were, I, I don't know if that was the same trip for your birthday that was all you oh where i fell asleep but that well Ooh. you got you got in there you were like i want oh, one of everything on the menu i ordered quite a bit and, we, and, awesome. and you pulled a ron swanson it's like i think you thought i said like i want a lot i want one of everything on the menu <laughs> it was and this is a bar you go this is a bar that's open 24 hours how they get around those laws in tennessee i don't know but you can order beer at 24 hours a day there why and it just comes up a spot to hang out at some point where you just yeah. drink your own skull yeah. <laughs> and it was like a ridiculous amount of grits like four because they have all these grits. different pizzas so so they bring them one one of every pizza and then so there's a large pizza of every kind there <laughs> and he we i wake up to a text like what he's like why do i have so much t- to go food i was like i have half of it because i wasn't letting you take all of it <laughs> <laughs> sounds great yeah uh, and that was in in between the text was me you know which just the pounding of we built this city in my head yeah. it was just deep <laughs> inside of my head i had no idea why it was because i yeah. made him made him play it 36 times yeah. in a row right. well let's get on it you've got a game to go to uh, a little bit of news: Ekblad out for the season. Uh, what what a horrible injury! It was horrible to watch. Uh, ho- hopefully, I mean, I hope he makes a quick recovery. Uh, you know, he's definitely out for the season, but it's I believe they it's about a twelve something like a twelve week recovery time. Mm, yeah, so he should be back in time for next season. Uh, but you know, the Florida Panthers were looking good. I think they're, but I think they're going to continue being pretty good. You know, where like I said in the main show. Where they might start to struggle without him is the playoffs. Yeah, they're pretty banged up right now, but uh, I mean, we'll see. Hopefully, they can still hang in there. Might be a good time to be banged up. It though, might be yeah, so yeah. you get healthy towards the playoffs, and and I wouldn't say that anybody's in like an absolute secure yeah. position, but you know that central division there, they're in a they're in a decent spot. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly as Bobby said down the stretch playoff wise. I mean, you need a guy like Ekblad back there. Uh, I mean, they still have a great, a a ton of offensive pieces and they don't have a bad defense by any means, but that leader on that back line is, is pretty important come playoff time. So I will be interested to see where they go from here, but devastating Mm -hmm. injury for fantasy. I know that he was probably a late round draft pick for you and And he's been helping out, and and you know now is the time you really need him, and you got to go and figure something out. I I don't think I have him anywhere. I've got him in. I think our high score, um, and okay. that's it. So, and you probably sad. got some good value, so it I doesn't did, like yeah. tremendously hurt you. But you know, there's that, plenty of defensemen that, on that. So I mean, those we'll great. Okay. That, they want that, and I think that high scoring league is so hit heavy that it you is. can go and find any type of third exactly. third pairing defenseman that that beats down people. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. we got. I, you know, guys that generally are not great players in other leagues are great in that league. Right. Uh, de- definitely disappointed in uh, Horiecki in that yeah. league. You know, yeah. he was, I mean, he was just not what you expected. I mean, dude had like 7,000 hits last year and, you know, you're, uh, he was, just, he's just not been what the Preds expected, yeah. uh, unfortunately, but um all right, no, feel Let, bad. Let's move into our weekly impressions. Last, uh, last, uh, you heard from us. This was a question, no longer a question. It's a <laughs> statement. The Preds. Last time it was Preds. Maybe now the Preds have been looking for real these last two, three weeks. Uh, they've uh, five in a row as of recording. Uh, seven out of their last eight, they've won two games against the Stars and one against the Hawks before this episode releases. Great goaltending this past stretch. So, question is: Is UC Stars the future? For the longest time, we said he was a band aid until they find something better. But honestly, he is playing lights out. I mean, he's above a nine. Uh, he's a, above a, a .99 uh, save percentage since he got back from that concussion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he is. 
I don't know what uh, that concussion knocked something r- right I mean, in there, but he's been l- awesome. I'm I'm so glad to hear that too because earlier in the season it just he was just not there. He, he was not good. showing up, yeah. and we were worried. We we're like, oh, the Preds are they're going to need to go get a goalie. They're going to need a new goalie. This guy's just not the future. Well, I'm he's starting to look like it now, and that's that's good timing. <laughs> Excellent really timing good timing. On his part. Because even if the answer is, you know, he's still a short-term Band-Aid, I mean, we just spent a high draft capital pick on a goalie, but, you know, you don't seem to think that this goalie's quite ready yet. I mean, you know, that's that's, that's the problem. So even in any type of competition at all, you're going to have to go get another goalie, Mm. potentially. So it is good to see, even if if the answer is still, you know, I don't think that he's the long-term answer. It's still good to see that at least he's a good short term answer for sure. For sure. Uh, I mean, we got guys are playing like we expected them to play in the beginning. Uh, my opinion, they're sh- pushing at the right time. There ain't nothing like being hot going into the playoffs, not just being hot all year, or whatever. Right. I mean, you know, that's so. I'm 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 excited for for the guys. I am uh, I'm glad that they're they're pushing a little harder. But it's mostly just glad to not be embarrassed in watching a game anymore. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you want to watch the game instead of just like you feel like you're being forced to do it. So. Yeah, agreed. Davey, what do you got? I have the Winnipeg Jets. Man, they're rolling right now. Uh, they're playing great hockey. Uh, they've won eight of their last twelve, uh, including two against the first place Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, in which they they play them a few more times this season. Um, but taking two out of the number one like that's impressive. They're only one point behind them as of recording. So I think Winnipeg has the best forward core in the NHL right now. And that's, that might be semi bowl, but I like that. The third line of Lowry cop and Appleton is, I mean, has been consistent. I've picked up Lowry cop cop is a guy you might even want to keep on your roster at this point. I think I had him as a pickup. Yeah. He's center left wing capabilities. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And and they're on fire. That whole third line's playing great hockey. Um, I've grabbed both of them. You know, I, I would say, at this point, if you can get cop, go grab him. Hang on to him. He might get he might get you into the playoffs and and help you in the playoffs if you're uh, if you're going. So yeah, I I agree with that completely. My weekly impression was very similar to Davies, except for more of just an overall. There's a massive showdown going on right now in the Scotia North it's Division. Fun. Toronto, 35 games played, 47 points. Winnipeg, 36 games played. 46 points. Edmonton, 36 games played, 45 points. Montreal, only 31 games played and 37 points. Well, that's going to be a massive shuffle, you know, towards the end. I mean, we the, the order that we're looking at right now, it could end this way, but it absolutely could. I would not be surprised to see any four of these teams in any four of these positions yeah. come playoff time. And that's going to matter a lot based off this playoff format, right? I mean, where you're at is going to be dependent on who you play type of deal. So, so that's uh that's, this is a, uh, a Goliath of a division right now. And, you know, I mean, they're all Canadian teams, so you don't expect them to do anything when the playoffs come. But yeah. right now, <laughs> right now, as we sit here and talk and especially fantasy wise, We've talked about it all year. These guys are getting to play all their games. Their their games are when they matter, and they're playing against other high scoring teams that are getting lots of points. Mm-hmm. So unless you're ha- unless you have the goalies of these teams, it's a good bet to go out and try to grab any of these four teams guys uh, right now. <laughs> all right, let's move into some pickups. Uh, I've got Mikhail Granlin, eight percent rostered. Uh, listen, he's a top six skater right now. He scored in three of his past four contests, including with the extra skater. Um, he's found his touch. The question is, will that touch remain in Nashville, or is yeah. that a touch headed to Toronto? I will he la- touch me? We'll find <laughs> out on next no episode. <laughs> no clue. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> next time on the Nashville Sexual Predators. <laughs> uh, but no, so I definitely think that I, I think I, I think that. We, it's a foregone conclusion that the Preds are gonna, not going to be sellers, especially, you know, not just the playoff push aside, uh, but also because financially, I p- think a lot of people forget that these teams, quote unquote, lost a lot of money relatively that they're used to right. to COVID. They, the management, they want those home playoff games. Yeah. That they, because I think somewhere like, like a home, like a uh, home playoff series is worth like, 10 regular season games at home sure. especially by that time you know they're, they're they might actually be able to put fans in the stands fully mm-hmm. 
So yeah, I think that's. But yeah, I think Mikhail Granlund <laughs> I, I do is s- on the upswing. And listen, you can get him in most leagues. He yeah. is usually a point eight one ninety two percent of leagues to be yeah. exact. He's like a point eight one goal uh, points per uh, goal uh, points per game scorer. He's ticked up to point eight nine. But I do want to say that, you know, while I don't think the Preds should be sellers, I also don't think that we should be buyers. I don't yeah, think that I we agree. should give up. I think it should just be, you know, go with what you got. I don't yeah. think you should be giving stuff. We're not a good enough team, in my opinion, to be giving up a bunch of assets to make a second round push, right, you know, right, right now as we're as we're sitting so I think that uh, that you got a good squad. I just don't think that making a bunch of moves right here at the deadline, either way, is a good call, in my opinion. I don't think you're going to get the value that you want for your guys if you're selling, and I think you're going to have to overpay if you're buying. So mm-hmm. I, I 100% agree. All right. Uh, so, Davey, what do you got? I have, uh, I have Jason Robertson, Dallas Stars, and it's tough for me to pick a Dallas Star player right now. Um, as a pickup, but he's getting first line looks with Rope Hintz and Joe Pavelski, and he's top power play unit, only 24% owned, six goals, 15 assists. Jason Robertson is a stellar rookie. He is, I mean, I think that even though it's Dallas Stars, he's still playing better hockey than a lot of the roster right now, and he's, like I said, a rookie. This is a guy that if you have a chance for maybe a keeper or a dynasty or something like that, he might be a good, solid pick. He's not, he's not, he's an option at least. And uh, he's just been playing good hockey for Dallas. I enjoy watching him every night, despite the the team and how bad they're playing. Jason Robertson is one of the plus sides for Dallas right now. And if you've got a spot for somebody like him, I know he's only left wing capability, but he might not be bad grabbing, especially with that top line exposure to Pavelski and and Hintz. So well, and a left wing is is always a little harder to come by mm-hmm. than that right wing anyway. Yeah. Um, so. But I mean, you know, you you said maybe go grab him if you're in a di- if you're in a dynasty league and a guy like Jason Robertson's available and you're not grabbing him. Right. Like I would love to see your roster. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's that's the thing. He's he's a, a good option for a lot of non dynasty non keeper yeah. leagues right now. So why in the world you wouldn't want to be trying to grab him for down the road, especially yeah. dynasty? Maybe not keeper, depending on your your setup, but. Uh, but no, I 100% agree. I'm actually going to go and I'm, and I'm fairly certain either Davey or me or Bobby, I'm sure maybe all three of us at separate times throughout this season have said there are no, there is no value in Detroit. And I, at the time that we said it, it was absolutely true. They've been playing a lot better as of late. Robbie Fabry. Uh, is a guy that I'm looking at 14% owned center left wing, right wing capabilities, 10 goals, eight assists this season. He's going to be decent for hits and shots on goal. I mean, 31 hits this season, 79 shots on goal. They're playing better as, as of late, as I, as I've said, I mean, that, that there can be some value in, in a little bit of a streaky uh, version of a team. Uh, if you're asking, if you're gun to my head right now, Granlund is the better option here, especially with yeah. all three capabilities. But Fabry is, they're not really playing for anything like the Preds have currently been playing for anything. Right. So, you know, they're, they're looking to, to get some of this, this younger talent into the game and actually be able to develop a little bit. So that is something that he would have advantage over Granlund for. Um, and in, in correspondence with the, you know, triple eligibility right there. Mm-hmm. So, all right, let's move on to our streams of the week. I was in the middle of writing one and I realized, wow, yes, it's also my fading. I, I, it was hard for me to find a team that I'm actually like hailing that Bobby's have- fading and streaming the same <laughs> team. <laughs> and <laughs> listen, there is, okay. So there is a reason why I was doing that. And I'm going to stick to my guns now. Um, I've got the flyers. Simply because, listen, if you've got Flyers players, they've got a lot of games this week. If you can find some players, like they've got a lot of games. So if you're struggling with injuries, go find some Flyers players, plug in them, and listen, they're not going to score zero goals. They might score close to zero, but there's <laughs> going to be some other things. There'll be some hits. There'll be, you know, some, if you're in a Cats League, there'll be something there. Um, and but listen, you guys got the Predators and the Bruins, so you took all the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, and I, honestly, I thought about the Flyer. I mean, five games. You guys know I generally go towards the games played for the streams yeah. because it's just 
It's big. I don't like their game, the days of the week they're playing the games. You know, I'm huge on those yeah. off nights when we're talking mm-hmm. about streaming that Monday, Tuesday. So you got the one Monday, but then the next one's Thursday and then the next one's Saturday. And then the next one is Sunday. It it's a ru- it's a mm-hmm. rough schedule with two back to backs and one right there in the and right smack dab in the middle. I don't hate the pick because I almost picked it. Uh, and if they can kind of step up their game a little bit, that's going to be great. It looks like you two are just battling out to see which team may <laughs> actually I know. get into the playoff. Y'all know that if neither of them yeah. get into the playoffs, I win and I water bet both of you. Yeah. So, so you win. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is it, it, it is honestly sad for two teams that we all, we both figured would both make the playoffs. No but who problem. was going to go yeah. further? But who was going to go further? That was that was how <laughs> yeah. confident you guys were in this bet is who goes furthest in the oh, playoffs. Man. And then I felt like I got a, an, an up there because I was like, oh, Line Aid's coming to town and oh, Roslevic. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man. It I, was all I, good got, for you. It's for, great. <laughs> it was all good for you guys for a little bit. Both y'all were, hat, y'all were, y'all were smack talking <laughs> yeah. to each other. And you know, you notice the only time we talk about this bet these days is when I bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I try to avoid it now. <laughs> it is, I mean, but no. And but I bet it, on the Flyers again for a water bet today earlier today but, it, oh, but yeah yeah exactly <laughs> this is just a straight up <laughs> just, they just need to beat the bruins <laughs> um yeah no it's in it but it is sad because these are two teams that we all three had high expectations on but higher some higher than others on other yeah. group they've just they've just been they've just been poor as of late um but i don't hate the the pick of the stream of the week it's hard to pass up five games if you can go get a guy on a Sunday afternoon with yeah. an extra pickup, and then you have five games that week, that's yeah. a solid. Not to mention, there's still the talents there. They could, it is. they could still turn something around. And even if they split this, split these games, they're still going to put up some scores. I, mean, uh, I have the Predators this week for my stream of the week. Uh, they're hot. They're hot right now. We talked about it earlier. Four games this week. So hot right now. There it is. Two, uh, two, four games this week. Two against the uh, last place Red Wings. Huge for the Predators. Massive games for them, obviously. Uh, one against the Lightning and one against Dallas. So these are, this is a big week. This is a big week for the yeah. Predators. They need to win a lot of these games. They need to win three of the four of these games. And depending on, you know, I, I think that this could be make or break. This is a big, yeah. big, I think the biggest week for the Preds right here. Interesting how they play against, uh, against Tampa. Agree. Oh, yeah. It's a big litmus test for them. Huge. Winning, winning those games against Detroit is all good and dandy for right, playoff right. position and winning everything. Winning those games in Chicago. You got to win. You got to win the games that are pickums right you know you gotta win those games if you want to show exactly why you go you're in, going and you go in and you beat the lightning oh you're yeah. a whole different here's team. the thing with the central right now we're saying oh this coming up weeks every week from now until the playoffs is important for teams that are trying to get in the playoffs it because is so, every single game is a four-point game mm-hmm. it is as much as it is as it's getting uh, on the more boring side of watching the same matchups in it game, game in and game out you got to admit, I mean, all four divisions have been massively shifting. There right. has not been, I was talking about that on the main show earlier, there has not been just a massive like, okay, foregone conclusion like we normally get throughout the season where there's a couple of teams in each division that right. is just so right. far ahead of every other piece. I mean, even in the 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 Central or the West, I mean, they're all shuffling right there between each other so it it is crazy for my stream of the week i have the bruins uh i got the i jumped in the dock first and snagged the other five five game week Uh, i don't not a super huge fan of their scheduling either but again five games is five games when it comes to streaming Uh, i think my tweeted out uh stream of the week uh was, never mind. That was a penguin. I'm so sorry. Uh, but no, the Bruins have <clears throat> the same sort of setup schedule that the Flyers have. Monday, Tuesday, obviously, the Bruins are playing the Flyers because that's who they were playing. <laughs> who the Flyers were playing were the Bruins. Uh, Capitals on Thursday, Friday again, uh, or Saturday, they have the Flyers again, and then the Capitals again. I just think that. I went with the Bruins over the Flyers just because that's such a that there's an opportunity that each one of these games have has a total of eight goals, you know, mm-hmm. and so that's a lot of opportunity for the Bruins, who really realistically 
really need to step up their game. They really they do. They were so strong earlier in the season. I feel like this is a good week. I feel like sometimes a five-game week can be daunting for you, but for a team like the Bruins that really needs an influx of wins and points, I think this is the team to you know take and accept and step up. I mean, Pasta, this there's like a out outside chance that this dude wins the freaking rocket Richard after <laughs> missing a month of yeah. the season. Like it's insane. I think that there's a lot of value to be found there. So that's who I'm looking to stream this week. If I, if I need to teams are too good right now, I'm not been doing a lot of streaming, but <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move into tailing and fading. Uh, I'm tailing the wild uh, two games against the abs, possibly high scoring and two games against the oh, so terrible blues. <laughs> Maybe not as bad as Buffalo, but, you know, we'll see how the season ends. They're both blue. They're getting close. Yeah. Blue <laughs> teams. There's a possibility they could end up with the same record. So, I mean, I'm just saying the possibility's out there. I don't even know if that's even it, actually I, possible. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's mathematically possible, to be completely honest here. Um, close, though. That's good. Close. Yeah, that's good though. Uh, but I, I think that the, the Sabres would have to win 20 out of the next 10. You're right. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I, I think right now, <laughs> did you just get it? <laughs> oh, no, I got no it at first, and then I was like, I just thought about that, and then I just laughed again. <laughs> I got it at first, and I was like, that's so sad, oh, and then I like, really thought about it, and I was like, it would be lucky if they won 10 <laughs> the, right. the whole season. They only need four more. <laughs> yeah, honestly, a, a real side chat, do, you, do we think they're hitting 10 wins this season? Uh, they're getting it. Yeah, they're getting they're it. Hit, they'll hit 10. You can't not get 10. Oh, my, man. I'm, I'm not going to water bet it. I think, our, I think they end with nine wins. I think they end with nine wins. And <laughs> in our in our you know, we did our preseason awards on the main show and then yeah. did mid season. And so we could change mid season yep, and yep. get, you know, half the points if they win. You know who my GM of the year award was? It was <laughs> Kevin Adams uh, okay. from Buffalo. All right. <laughs> So as you can imagine, I did not double down on that one. I did change it up. Uh, you know, I like to I like to you know I like to well, share the love. I had a Buffalo player. Uh, I had a did I have, did I have Jack Pitt? Eichel I had for Jack the Eichel for, for the, the heart. heart. Hey, Jack Eichel for the okay. heart. Yeah. Okay. I also changed. Can we that. be fair though? That's a lot closer to hitting than uh, than my GM of the year <laughs> award. I kind of want them to like do like a carry at prom night for for him or, or on the NHL honors. Like he like they pretend that he wins it and the just like they just is, start booing him. The biggest <laughs> problem is we already got the last GM of Buffalo fired when we did <laughs> our when we did our review after the season. We we talked smack about him, said he should get fired. Next week he was fired. Mm -hmm. Kevin Adams comes in. I'm talking this dude up, and now <laughs> you know now. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we we got a hustle up here. Sorry. Uh, I've got no, no, you're good. I started that one. Uh, wi uh, I've got the wild. Tell you already wild. did that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Davey. <laughs> no, I've got the, uh, I've got the coyotes. Uh, I initially, I wanted to pick Tampa Bay, but that's too obvious for your, for tailing. So I want to do something a little different and, and pick the coyotes here. Uh, one point back from the fourth spot as of recording three games this week, one against Colorado, two against the, uh, the ducks. Uh, they have potential to take over that fourth spot from the blues who are not playing good hockey at all. So in my opinion, we got Coyotes probably going to surpass the Blues potentially. They're playing good that's hockey. Kessel's the, uh, starting to play pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I don't really look all right. I'm I'm that's I'm going with Coyotes in this situation. So yeah, I don't disagree with that. You know, with especially with the the schedule that the Blues have this week, uh, that's not a bad call. I almost picked them, but I figured I would keep with my tradition of just picking with whoever is first in the East <laughs> each works. week. Uh, last, you know, like, like a couple weeks ago, it was the Islanders and they were holding it down. And so I'm, I've got the Washington Capitals. Uh, I don't know if they'll still be in first by the time we record this, but they got four games this week. Isles, um, Sabres, two games against the Bruins. They're 12 and two. Uh, so far in the month of March, I think I put April on the dock, but at March there, I don't know the future, but maybe, <laughs> uh, you know, Ovi super kicking it up currently at 18 goals. They're leading the division over the, over the aisles with two less games played. That could be a dangerous team in, in your fantasy playoffs. So, uh, you know, hold tight to those capitals, go find uh, a couple guys. I mean, Dimitri Orlov. Yeah. Depending on the style of league you're playing, that's always a good option. Uh, if you're in a big hits league, I think it's Garrett Hathaway, the the right wing. 
I mean, that dude lays down hits like no other. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's that. There's going to be a lot of value in uh, tailing this team this week, especially with four games against three good opponents, and then also the Bru- the Bruins are or not the Bruins, and also playing the Sabers. So they're <laughs> they got four games this week, but three against real teams. Uh, let's move into our fading. Bondo, yeah, I, uh, I've got the Columbus Blue Jackets. I'm so sorry, Davey. Um, <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> they're, as of recording, four-game losing streak. Uh, tough week, as is, but only three games this week. Two against the Lightning, and then one against the Blackhawks. They just cannot <sighs> seem to get it together. No. And we talked earlier this season about, you know, is it, you know, is it the coaching? Is it Patrick Line? And I mean, you know, I'm not here to make a snap judgment, but it's looking more and more like it's Patrick Line as, uh, <laughs> as, as, as things continue. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I think that a benefit to them, obviously they've got Merz Lickens back and Corpus Allo is now day to day, uh, as a Corpus Allo owner or, or a, you know, someone who rosters Corpus Allo. That's a major benefit to uh, to all of us that have been owning him this season. And he started so strong and he has yeah. been so weak lately. And most of the leagues that I have him, I also have Merz Licken. So it's more of like I'm just using them yeah. to get the start. But uh, I, I finally got to pull the trigger and dropping and dropping Corpus Allo. It felt good, I bet. Oh <laughs> my gosh, it felt like a dream. I'm worried because, you know, it's a four-start start league, and I have, uh, you know, I have Merzlikens and Mike Smith in okay, that league. Yeah. And so it's a rough go of it, but they've been giving me good, good play. And I'll have two as of tonight. So two okay. already. Okay. Mike Smith started last night. Merzlikens started tonight, or starting tonight. So two, I can I can make up for that if needed, yeah. but uh, yeah, right. I am fading Columbus hard, man. They are they are just they are not clicking. Uh, good, whatever good it is, good choice. I, I'm I've got the L.A. Kings. Uh, you know, for a couple weeks ago, you know they were showing signs of they were showing signs of life. They were, and we were we were picking guys I on got the team. And, them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, so, but it appears to be they're slipping off now. Uh, with the Coyotes and the Blues ahead of them significantly now. I guess, I mean, it might be only like six points, but still, it that's almost becoming out of reach, especially when you're not playing very good hockey. Um, you know, they do have decent fantasy options, but, you know, the main fantasy relevant guys have, have certainly fallen off. And uh, I, I just, I'm done with them. I think I'm done with the Kings. I know I talked a couple guys up. I know we talked to I follow you, follow I up, follow, a, yeah. you know, a few times. And, Dustin I, I, Brown is never a bad little no, streaming candidate if you can get him. Exactly. I mean, and there's a few guys out there that are still decent that you could pick up, but I'm fading this team hard. I don't see them doing much. I think that they're done. I think the race is now strictly between the Coyotes and the Blues, and that's it. Well, and, and you know, the Kings are such a good choice for that because their they're relevant fantasy options right. are not available because they're big no. names. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, you know, it's not a whole ton of streaming opportunity Limited. there. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad call at all. We were fairly high on them a, a few weeks ago, but such is the nature of fantasy hockey is exactly. that you gotta be you gotta be willing to you're out of here, buddy. Out. <laughs> Bobby, now yep. I'm really, really looking forward to this explanation. All right. Stream these guys, but <laughs> stream these guys, but listen. Also don't. <laughs> if you've got if they're playing, don't start these guys over other guys. So stream them, pick them up. If you've got some open spots, if you got IR spots that, you know, right now I'm in a league, I've got a league with five IR. They are all filled and I've got three guys taking a bench spots on the IR. I am plagued with IR spots. So right now in that league, I can play Flyers players. I can afford to play some Flyers players. In, in other leagues where I have no injured players, I'm not starting a Flyers guy over someone from like the Rangers or something like mm-hmm. that. Uh, but yeah, no, so stream them, but I'm still fading them. Honestly, it was literally the only explanation you could have made that I <laughs> I didn't completely you hate your your argument for that. That's a really good point. Well it, it almost it almost puts me in my place. Almost. <laughs> almost. Not quite, it but. is such a good point because I guess technically you could argue the stream of the week is just so you can get some, you know, bodies on your on your roster and the fade is if you can avoid them. Do yeah. and so I honestly, great answer. I feel so yeah, nice. I feel almost <laughs> bad for smack talking you, almost. 
But all right, let's get this guy to a game. We will see you guys next week. Make sure to tune in for the main show. Uh, download, comment on the show. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. This has been the Fantasy Goons Podcast, brought to you by Standing Stone Farms. Listen to the boys every week and join in on the conversation on the three majors of social media. Uh-huh.